Emma! I was told you were in the garden. It's tonight, dear. I had no notion you had to come back from London. When did you return? This morning before breakfast. Oh, then you had a wet journey, I'm afraid. <laughs> yes, I did. Very unpleasant. And your father, he's well despite that dreadful weather? Perfectly, thank you. He really does not mind being obliged to remain indoors. It is I who suffer, in temper at least. Whom were you about to visit, Harriet? Harriet? Oh, no, no. I was not visiting. I was merely taking the air a little, that is all. May I join you? Please do. Shall we take shelter? By all means. Well, Mr. Knightley, have you heard the news? Uh, what kind of news? Not unpleasant, I hope. Oh, no. Pleasant. Very pleasant. There is to be a wedding. And what could be more pleasant than that? You mean Jane Fairfax and Frank Churchill? But who told you? Only I and one or two others know of it. I had a note from Weston on parish matters. He mentioned it. Oh, Mr. Weston. So you see, like most secrets, it's well known to all. I am sure you are less surprised than any of us, Mr. Knightley. I remember once you cautioned me. I do wish I had attended to it. But I seem to have been doomed to blindness upon a great many matters. Poor Emma. Do not take it too much to heart. Oh, I, I do not, I, I assure you. What right have I to do so, Mr. Knightley? Your time. None whatever. It's your time, dearest Emma. Time will heal the wound. Yes. Yes, of course. You're an excellent good sense. The need your father has of you, these surely must be some comfort to you. Oh, yes, they are. Most certainly. An abominable fellow. Scoundrel. Poor Jane deserves better, in my opinion. Jane. Much, much better. It's a sorry business for all concerned, if you ask me. Oh, Mr. Knightley, you are quite mistaken. Hmm? I can assure you I need no sympathy where that match is concerned. Oh, my. Is this really true? Oh, yes. I can swear it from my heart. <gasps> then whom did you think I meant? I, I was not sure that... That is, I, I think I somewhat mistook your meaning. I thought perhaps you referred to... Hmm? But no matter. My blindness where Mr. Frank Churchill was concerned, led me to act very foolishly. I see that now. The fault was mainly his. I'm sure you had very little with which to reproach yourself. Oh, I can assure you that is not so. I have very little to say in my own defense. I was tempted by his attentions. My vanity was flattered. I see now that I was merely a blind to conceal his sure feelings for her, and I was taken in. With all the rest. The man is a villain, utterly beneath contempt. Except that somewhere inside, I think perhaps I was not quite taken in. Something, I, I know not what, has kept me safe from him. Oh, well, perhaps there may be some hope for him yet. She may save him. I do know your high opinion of her. Oh, indeed, he is a favorite of fortune. He meets with a young woman on holiday, gains her affection. But his aunt is in the way. Then his aunt dies. He has used everybody ill, and they're all delighted to forgive him. <laughs> now, he's indeed a fortunate young man to draw such a prize, because no man, in my opinion, whoever he may be, can fail to benefit from the company of a good-hearted, honest woman. You speak as though you envied him, Mr. Knight. <laughs> yes. 
Yes, in this one respect at least, I do envy him. And never more so than at this moment. You do not ask me why, I notice. You are determined to have no curiosity, it seems. Oh, that is not but the you're, reason. You're wise, no doubt, very wise, very wise. But I, I can be wise no longer. Emma, I must tell you what you will not ask, even though I may wish it unsaid the next moment. Please do not say it, Mr Knightley. Please, please do not say it. Very well. As you wish. Perhaps we should go in. Your father must wonder what has become of you. Please forgive me, Mr Knightley. It is just that I could not bear for anything to spoil our long and happy friendship. So tell me what you wish, and I will hear it and try to give my true opinion as a friend. As a friend? Oh, oh my dear Emma, I have no wish. Well, never mind, never mind. So be it. I, I accept your offer, strange as it may seem. As a friend, then? Hmm? Well, tell me, have I no chance of ever succeeding? Mr. Knightley, I think oh, my dearest I Emma, things. whatever the outcome of this conversation, my dearest, most beloved Emma. Mr. Knightley. Tell me at once. I mean, say no, if it must be said. Oh, you know I cannot make speeches, Emma. I loved you less, I could talk about it more, but you know what I am. And I've blamed you and lectured you, and you've borne it all more than any other woman in England would have done. Oh, God knows I've been a very indifferent lover. But you understand me, I know you do. And at this moment, all I want is to hear your voice. In case she's met with an accident. Yes, sir. Well, and send one of the boys round to Dr. Perry. Tell him to come at once. At once, mind. Yes, sir. Oh, why ever did I consent to her going? It was the wildest folly. Sheer madness. I shall blame myself for the rest of my life. <laughs> to think that it has taken me so long to recognise what was there before my eyes all this time. And <laughs> I, who thought myself so expert upon these matters, could not even see into the workings of my own heart. <laughs> Oh, we are a sorry pair of fools, you and I. But we need not admit as much to anyone but each other. I have only one worry in all this, and that is my father. Oh, yes, your father. He does pose something of a problem. But I think for the moment we should keep silent, do not you? Yes, I fear so. Until perhaps some favourable opportunity presents itself. 